It's officially spring, and even if it's not quite time to get into the garden yet, it is the perfect time to learn some gardening hacks from the Carson Arthur. All right, Carson, what do you got for us? Well, Tracy, all those people like yourself sharing all those amazing tropical pictures of their vacations and all the people on the West Coast who've already started digging in have got me itching. But I still got snow all around me. So I've got some things that you can do at home right now to get you, you know, in the mood, but also to get you better prepared for the season ahead. So my first hack is an oldie, but it's a goodie, and it involves toilet paper. Now, I unfortunately suffer from big hand syndrome. <laughs> that and a little bit of lack of patience. So I'm not really good at planting small seeds. So this is a homemade seed tape. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your toilet paper like this and you're just going to fold it in half because you want it a little bit more stable than one ply. So you're going to fold it in half like this. You're going to take your tape measure, put it down like this, very easy. And we're going to measure it out based on the seed package that you're growing. So in this case, I'm going to grow some beets. Beets say one inch apart. So I'm going to measure one inch apart and put a little dot with my marker on the toilet paper. So it's just as simple as this. And I'm measuring it across. As I go the length that I want to do my row, I can measure that with the toilet paper. It makes it really easy. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to get some child safe glue, the edible stuff that nobody's supposed to eat, but you could and not get sick from it. Good stuff. So we're going to use the glue and we're going to put it down on the little dots here. Just put a little pea sized blob of glue on there. Very simple. And then on top of the glue, we're going to take our seeds. And in this case, as I said, the beet seeds, and we're going to put a seed on each one of the little spots of glue. Now what happens is I have my seed tape completely ready. When it's time to plant in Victoria Day weekend and if you're in the Ontario area, then you can actually put the tape right in the ground. So my seed tape, as it looks like that, will go right into the soil. I'll put soil on top of it, I'll water it. These seeds will start germinating, but most importantly, I don't have to sit in the garden trying to do this because that drives me nuts. <laughs> That is awesome, and it's like so perfectly spaced. What a smart way to do it, and the glue doesn't get in the way, eh, Carson? No, the glue doesn't get in the way because the glue's gonna dry around your seeds. So make sure the glue dries before you wrap it all up, but make it a little note on it what it is, and you're ready for spring planting. But I got another one for you, Tracy. If you like spacing, you're kind of talking my game. So I always find that when I'm in the garden and I'm doing something, I'm trying to make even straight rows or have proper spacing for all of my plants, but I never have a tape measure actually with me. What I do have are garden tools. So one of my favorite hacks is to take one of these tools and turn it into a tape measure. And it's just as easy as laying it down, putting the tape measure out here like this, and we're doing the exact same thing. We're actually marking it on the handle. So now I have all of my measurements right here if I actually need to use it in the garden. I'll show you the finished product. Looks something like this. Smart. Isn't that fantastic? So I have all of my measurements, all of my spacings here, and they're at hand. So as I'm working in the garden and I need to measure something out, boom, I can do it. Easy, it doesn't require any extra work on my part. Just one last thing for you to think about when you're out there doing your thing, huh? You don't have to go around wondering where that measuring tape is. Now, for all my tomato growers out there. Now, Tracy, have you tried growing tomatoes recently? Do you, you remember who I am, right? <laughs> remember? I know. I thought I'd have to Rethink that I question. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, Tracy, this is the year you're going to need to grow tomatoes because they're going to be more expensive than ever. Okay. And this is my secret for growing the largest tomatoes possible. So you're just going to get either a two liter pop bottle or an empty clear container like I have here. We're going to start by taking off the lid. And with the little drill here, with the smallest drill bit, or even just a little knife, we're going to actually put a hole into the lid, just puncture it, put the lid back onto the bottle, like that. We're going to take our bottle with a sharp X-Acto knife, and be safe when you're doing this, but we're going to actually cut the bottom off of this bottle. I'm going to do that right here. Of course, on TV, it never works perfect the first time, right? Oh, that we're looks gonna good. We're going to do that. Now, what you have is you've created a little funnel. This is going to sit beside your tomato plant in the ground and you're going to bury it till about an inch is exposed and you want to put this about a foot to a foot and a half away from your tomato plant. Fill this with water and what happens is the water will leak out the little tiny hole slowly so it adds more water, more moisture at a deeper level. This will encourage more root development on your tomato plants giving you bigger tomatoes. And if you're a huge fan of using liquid fertilizer, 
Couple shots in here, fill this up with the hose every time you're nearby, and you will have the biggest tomatoes you have ever seen in your garden that you grew organically. Okay, now that is a good advertisement right there. And you know what I like about it? It's one less thing that you're putting in the recycling bin. It's one less thing going in the landfill. Like, I like the way your DIYs, you reuse what we already have. Very good. You got another one for us? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about birds. Everybody complains about birds, and a lot of people are trying to grow fruit trees. So this is a great DIY of something that shouldn't end up in the recycling. It's your CDs. Mm. And I noticed that I have a pack of 50 that I have never used. I will never use these. But here's a great deterrent. Birds do not like the movement of CDs. So you take a string, put it through the hole, just create a little loop like that, hang it from your fruit trees. And as it spins around, squirrels, birds, anything that would be in the tree don't like that sound. They don't like the visual of it moving. They don't like the sound of it clinging against each other. But more importantly, if you don't like the look of CDs in your garden, go with something like this. Uh -huh. Just a simple wind chime in the garden will actually do the exact same thing. Movement in the trees stops squirrels and birds from invading your space. What a great use of all of our 90s and 80s uh, albums, right? If we're not listening to them anymore, I Absolutely. love it. Carson, that is 